The Lord be with you. And also with you. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. It's a great blessing to be in worship with you, with those of you who are here in person, and with all of you who are joining us from home. It is a great privilege and blessing to be gathered together as one body in the name of Jesus and in the power of the Holy Spirit. Today is the, the fifth Sunday of Easter, so our Easter celebration uh, continues. And, in, uh, and today we're going we're gonna to have a glance, uh, uh, we're going to have some spoilers about the end of the story today. Uh, and uh, we're going to look ahead at, at uh, God's going to give us a glimpse of, of what he has in store. We're going to talk about that today. I pray that the Lord richly bless your worship this morning. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. 
for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God in his mercy has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Oh, sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. His right hand and his holy arm have worked salvation for him. The Lord has made known his salvation. He has revealed his righteousness in the sight of the nations. He has remembered his steadfast love and faithfulness to the house of Israel all the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. Make a scene the salvation of our God. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Break forth into joyous song and sing praises. Sing praises to the Lord with the lyre, with the lyre and the sound of melody, with trumpets and the sound of the horn, Make a joyful noise before the King, the Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. O oh, sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. His right hand and his holy arm have worked salvation for him. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. 
Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God, you make the minds of your faithful to be of one will. Grant that we may love what you have commanded and desire what you promise, that among the many changes of this world our hearts may be fixed where true joys are found. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Our first reading is from the book of Acts, chapter 11, verses 1 through 18. Now the apostles and the brothers who were throughout Judea heard that the Gentiles also had received the word of God. So when Peter went up to Jerusalem, the circumcision party criticized him, saying, You went to uncircumcised men and ate with them. But Peter began and explained it to them in order. I was in the city of Joppa praying, and in a trance I saw a vision, something like a great sheet, 
descending, being let down from heaven by its four corners. And it came down to me. Looking, as, looking at it closely, I observed animals and beasts of prey and reptiles and birds of the air. And I heard a voice saying to me, Rise, Peter, kill and eat. But I said, By no means, Lord, for nothing common or unclean has ever entered my mouth. But the voice answered a second time from heaven, What God has made clean, do not call un- do not call common. This happened three times, and all were drawn up, ag- and all were was drawn up again into heaven. And behold, at that very moment, three men arrived at the house in which we were, went to went uh, sent to me from Caesarea, and the Spirit told me to go with them, making no distinction. These six brothers also accompanied me, and we entered the man's house. And he told me how he had seen the angel stand in his house and say, Send to Joppa and bring Simon, who is called Peter. He will declare to you a message by which you will be saved, you and all your household. As I began to speak, the Holy Spirit fell on them, just as on us at the beginning. And I remembered the words of the Lord, how he said, John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. If then God gave the same spirit to them as he gave to us when we believed in the Lord Jesus Christ, who was I that I could stand in God's way? When they heard these things, they fell, they fell silent, and they glorified God, saying, Then to the Gentiles also God has granted repentance that leads to life. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. We continue by reading responsibly our psalm, Psalm 148. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise him in the heights. Praise Praise him, all his angels. Praise him, all his hosts. Praise him, sun and moon. Praise him, all you shining stars. Praise Praise him, you highest heavens and you waters above the heavens. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for he commanded and they were created. And he established them forever and ever. He gave a decree, and it shall not pass away. Praise the Lord from the earth, you great sea creatures and all deeps. Fire and hail, snow and mist, stormy wind fulfilling his word. Mountains and all hills, fruit trees and all cedars, beasts and all livestock creeping things and flying birds, kings of the earth and all peoples, princes and all rulers of the earth, young men and maidens together, old men and children. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for his name alone is exalted. His majesty is above earth and heaven. He has raised up a horn for his people. Praise for all his saints, for the people of Israel who are near to him. Praise the Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our epistle this morning is taken from the book of Revelation, the 21st chapter, beginning at the first verse. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Behold, the dwelling place of God is with man. He will dwell with them, 
and they will be his people, and God himself will be with them as their God. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes, and death shall be no more. Neither shall there be mourning, nor crying, nor pain any more, for the former things have passed away. And he who has seated on the throne said, Behold, I am making all things new. And he said, Write this down, for these words are trustworthy and true. And he said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty I will give from the spring of the water of life without payment. The one who conquers will have this heritage, and I will be his God, and he will be my son. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. gospel according to St. John, the 16th chapter. Glory Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. When the Spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth, for he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak, and he will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me, For he will take what is mine and declare it to you. All that the Father has is mine. Therefore I said that he will take what is mine and declare it to you. A little while, and you will see me no longer. And again, a little while, and you will see me. So some of his disciples said to one another, What is this that he says to us? A little while, and you will not see me. And again, a little while, and you will see me. And because I am going to the Father. So they were saying, What does he mean by a little while? We do not know what he is talking about. 
Jesus knew that they wanted to ask him, so he said to them, Is this what you are asking yourselves, what I meant by saying, A little while, and you will not see me, and again, a little while, and you will see me? Truly, truly I say to you, you will weep and lament, but the world will rejoice. You will be sorrowful, but your sorrow will turn into joy. When a woman is giving birth, she has sorrow because her hour has come. But when she has delivered the baby, she no longer remembers the anguish for joy that a human being has been born into the world. So also you have sorrow now, but I will see you again, and your hearts will rejoice, and no one will take your joy from you. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, you O oh Christ. Christ. You may be seated. I'm going to go get a friend. Hey, Tiny, it's your... Tiny? He's not in his normal space. Sorry. Um, Tiny? Tiny? What are you doing under there? You don't want to come out? What's, what's the matter with you? You're acting very strangely this morning. So what's going on? Oh. Tiny says he was watching a show. Oh, you thought it was going to be a fun show? And then bad things started happening? Scary things started happening? It, it, it was too scary? Oh, he, he said the tension was too much. So he, so he, he hid, under the, hid under the chair. Well, this doesn't sound like a very appropriate show, Tiny. Were you, were you, were you watching a scary movie? So what is the show that you're watching? The news? Sometimes it does seem that way, right? Yeah, yeah sometimes, sometimes the news is scary, right? Sometimes the news is scary. And, and, and sometimes, sometimes we might prefer to hide under the chair. Um, yeah, sometimes the news is scary because we, we don't know what's going to happen and there are scary things happening in the world. You know, that's why in, in our, our readings today, right, Jesus said that, that he told his disciples, you're going you're gonna to have sorrow, right? You're going to be sad and you're going to be scared in this life. But he said, you're going to see me again, right? And no one's going to take your joy from you. And Jesus has, has actually, you know, sometimes we don't know what's going to happen in the world and so it's scary. But Jesus has told us what's going to happen in the long run. And what's that? Oh, that's why, I, oh, I should tell you? Oh, that's what I get paid for. Oh, okay. Um, Jesus is going to come again, right? Jesus wins. He has already won. He has won victory over sin and the devil and death and every sad thing. And he's told us so we know, no matter what happens in our lives, whatever it no matter what scary things we see on the news, that, that Jesus has already won. And he's going to come again in, in his own time, and he's going to make all things new and all things right. And so we don't have to be scared. Scary things do happen, and sad things do happen. But we know that Jesus lives, and Jesus has won, and Jesus is coming again. You feel better now? Oh, good. You know, if the, if the news upsets you, you can turn it off. <laughs> All right, I'm going to put you down and say a prayer with the people. You repeat after me. Dear Jesus. Dear Jesus. Sometimes life is scary. Sometimes life is scary. So please remind us. So please remind us. That you have, you have won that you have won the victory 
the victory over sin, over sin and death and death and every bad thing and every bad thing and remind us and remind us that we belong to you that we belong to you and you are coming again and you are coming again we love you jesus we love you jesus amen amen all right come on tiny maybe you should pay attention to church instead of the tv that seems like a good idea yeah all right say bye to the people Grace to you in peace. That's better. Grace to you in peace from God our Father, from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Our text for this morning is from our second reading from Revelation 21.
And he who is seated on the throne said, Behold, I am making all things new. Also he said to me, Write this down, for these words are trustworthy and true. And he said to me, It is done. This is our text. Dear friends, sisters, and brothers in Christ Jesus. So it occurs to me that when, when, it comes to, when it comes to TV and movies, that, that there, are basically, there are basically two kinds of people in the world. Um, are they the people who, who um, want to know as much as they can beforehand, um, and then there are other people who don't want to know anything at all, right? So, so nothing, nothing is spoiled. Um, this, can cause, this can cause tension in a marriage. <laughs> I, I think knowledge is good. I think knowledge is good. I just want to say that. Um, actually, and, and, you know, and some of this plays out culturally, too. I've, I've heard that, um, that, movie, you know, the, that the, the movie studios um, will often make, you know, they'll make multiple versions of their trailer uh, for different cultures because there, there's some cultures where you know, it's considered inappropriate to kind of like give away the end of the movie. But other cultures, like, it's upsetting if they don't know the end of the movie before they go into the go in, right? So, so in that case, the trailer kind of gives away the whole story so everybody knows what they're getting. Um, how, how, many of you, how many of you like to know? Oh, yeah, hey, I'm glad. There's some, right? some brave souls. How many of you don't want anything spoiled at all? Good. So let's talk about Spider-Man No Way Home. Uh, <laughs> no, we're not going to do that. We're, uh, we're going to talk about the Bible uh, this morning. And, and I feel like I should apologize to the majority of you uh, who don't like to know the end of the story. Uh, because today's, today's second reading gives away the ending of the, the story. Um, the story of the Bible, which is, which is also the story of, of history itself. So I, mean, I, I, so I don't apologize to you at the outset if your enjoyment of uh, the story of the universe has been spoiled by this morning. Um, by, way, by way of consolation, um, let's just say in some cases it's useful to know, it's useful to know the end of the story. And the useful thing about knowing the end of the story is that knowing the end of the story helps you understand what kind of story it is that you're, that you're hearing. Right. You guys remember this from high school English class, right, when you were reading Shakespeare, right? What, if, if you're reading, right, the story ends where everybody dies, right, that's, that's a tragedy. If, if it ends with a marriage, uh, it's a comedy, right? <laughs> I, did, I did not make that up. Um, the... Um, Our, our reading today is from the last book of the Bible, from the Revelation. And it, by the way, just so this is a useful thing to remember. It's, it's Revelation singular, uh, the Revelation to St. John, uh, which we've been reading during these weeks after Easter. And this is a strange, Revelation is, a, is admittedly a strange and difficult book. It's also one that people tend to have some fascination with or they're troubled by. Um, this book records a series of visions given to the Apostle John in his old age while he was in exile, imprisoned on the island of Patmos. And it's full of, of highly symbolic, uh, dreamlike language. So it's a, it's a challenging book and, and difficult in some places to interpret. Um, and it's, it's a book that, frankly, many Christians have gotten themselves into trouble with uh, by either focusing on it too intently or reading it too literally or by by reading, um, right, reading it with the Bible in one hand and, and the newspaper in the other, right, trying to, to see whether these, these prophecies are, are being fulfilled uh, right now. And people made a lot of money doing that, too. Um, the, uh, you know, the, the, you had, uh, some of you remember The Late Great Planet Earth, uh, a book that was published in the 1970s. It was a best-selling book of that decade. Uh, and then later, that was dwarfed by the Left Behind series, uh, which many of you remember um, as a, a great se a series of, as one of my professors put it, cheesily heretical novels. 
Um, but it was, it was a huge seller, right? Because people are curious about these things, right? People, they, may, they say they may tell you they don't want spoilers, but they want to know the ending of the story that we find ourselves in. Despite the difficulties of understanding Revelation, um, it remains an important book because it's a reminder, both in its original context and now, that, that despite all appearances to the contrary, we know the ending of the story. Or despite appearances to the contrary, history remains, remains firmly in, in the hands of God. And so Revelation serves as both an encouragement and a challenge to hold on to the hope of Easter in the face of a world that is full of, of sorrow, that is full of, of struggle, and in a world that is often hostile to the, the people of Christ. And Revelation does this by means of, of spoilers, by, giving, by means of giving us a glimpse of the end of the story so that we can understand what kind of story it is that we, we find ourselves in, right? And, and we need this even now because I think that, that often our sense of what kind of story we're in gets, gets warped, right? And it, it gets warped, it gets warped by the news, right? It gets warped by by social media, right? It gets warped by, by the internet. It gets warped by the, the voices around us who in many cases want to sell us a different story because it makes money. People make money when you were scared and when you were angry. And so Revelation invites us again to, to hear the true end of the story. Our reading today comes from the second to last chapter of the book. It's the, it's the climax of the book in many ways, as John witnesses the ending of history. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. The first spoiler that our reading gives us is the promise that awaits us at the end of all things is not simply the end. It's only just the beginning. It's only just the beginning. And a beginning not just for ourselves, but for all of, of creation. And we've talked about this recently, right? I, I think that if you, if you talk to a lot of people, a lot of, a lot of faithful believing Christians, you ask them right, what the goal of our Christian hope is, right, they would say, what? It's to go to heaven when we die. And that's true enough as far as it goes, but God is more in store for us than that. Right? God has more in store for us than that. Uh, and, and the New Testament consistently reminds us that, that God has in store for us not just the rescue of our souls, but the resurrection of our bodies and the return of Christ, and the renewal and transformation of, of all of creation. As I've probably said before, beam me up, Scotty, is not an expression of Christian hope. Right? I believe in the resurrection of the body and the life of the world to come. See, that's, that's what we believe. And the defining feature of this, this new creation is that the separation between heaven and earth is abolished, right? We see the new Jerusalem coming down out of heaven. The throne of God comes down out of heaven. Behold, the dwelling place of God is with people. He will dwell with them and they will be his people and God himself will be with them as their God. We were talking a little bit about, about Eden in Bible study this morning, right? This, and in some ways, this is a return to Eden, right? Which was paradise, not, not because there was a lot of fruit and you didn't have to work, although that part was nice too. What made Eden paradise is that it's a place where God and human beings walk together in the cool of the evening. And in the new creation, the separation of heaven and earth, which is really... It's a distance 
not of, not of geography, but of relationship, the separation caused by sin, that, that separation will be no more. And you will see God. You will see, you will see God. The answer to every question, the fulfillment of every human longing. And you'll do so because Jesus crossed the distance that we created and he's bringing his runaway children home. Which means that when we see God, because let's, let's be honest, for, for some people that may not be a comforting thought. But in Jesus, and because of Jesus, we know that when we see God, it will not be as, as a condemning judge, but as our loving Father. For there is no condemnation in those who are in Jesus. And like a loving Father, God will wipe every tear from your eye. And you parents know, one of the hardest things about being a parent is this: sometimes you can wipe away the tears from little eyes, but it's often out of your power to fix the cause of those tears. But nothing is outside of God's power. And so God is not only abolishing our separation from him, but he's abolishing all those symptoms of that separation, weeping and mourning and sorrow and evil and death. Nothing will be left to separate us from joy or from God or from those we love who belong to God. You know, when you watch a movie or a TV show, going in hoping that nothing's going to be spoiled, right? The, the, the irony of that is that the ending is only a surprise because you haven't seen it yet, right? In, in reality, the story is finished, right? The film is in the can, the actors have gone home and been paid. The ending is set. And so is the ending of our story. We haven't seen it yet. But the author of the universe wrote the end of the story before the stars were made. And he paid the cost for that ending through the death of his son on the cross. And he has brought you in to that story and sealed you to that ending in your baptism. And that story is not the tragedy that it sometimes seems. Rather, it's a story with a happy ending. It's a story that ends with a wedding. It is done, he says. For the author of history, the end of our story is an accomplished fact because the beginning and end are both alike to him. We haven't seen it yet, but he has. And he is waiting for you there. Ready to wipe away every tear from your eyes and to begin the new story that has no end. In Jesus' name, amen. I invite you to rise as we confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. 
and I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. You may be seated.
we continue with prayer. In our prayers this morning, we pray for the whole world, especially the people of Ukraine as they continue to suffer and endure the effects of war. We pray for our church, especially for our own Shepherd's Care Children's Center as they continue to navigate these days. And we pray for the Reverend Dr. William Harmon, who was elected as the new president of the Southeastern District at this week's uh, convention in Richmond. And we pray for all our other newly elected uh, district officers. We pray for all those in need of God's care, healing, and protection, especially for little Julian, a Karin Wurtz Schaefer's grandson. We pray for uh, Steve, a co-worker of Melissa Gregory's, who is undergoing medical treatment. And we, tra- we pray for, uh, for Melissa Gregory's mother, Martha Fouchard, who is uh, undergoing a heart procedure. We pray for all those who mourn, especially the family and friends of Rose Marie Carr and at uh, Anne Sprague's request, who passed away on May 1st. We continue to hold in our prayers and in our hearts all those who serve on the front lines during this pandemic, especially Sarah King, Sarah Edzinger, Thomas Gordon, David Har- Hillhouse, Deb Harmon, Mike Reinick, Christine Birch, Judy Sagel, Elena Wilson, Sungjun Ryu, Robert Sagel, Rosemary Simponia, Paul Fowler, Molly Mullen, Kathy Nicholson, Phil Nicholson, Lori Falk, and Don McCann. Let us pray. Lord of heaven and earth, in the glorious resurrection of your son Jesus, you have given the promise of our own resurrection. As we await the last day, calm our hearts and strengthen our faith through our sorrows. Lord, in your mercy, hear hear our prayer. Gracious God, lead you, gracious God, lead your people in steadfast love and guide them in strength to your holy abode. Sanctify our homes, be the companion of those who live alone, and make all our households places in which your wisdom and grace are found. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Eternal Lord, you hold all people accountable for the responsibilities you have given them. O Lord, bless our president, our governor, the Congress and legislature, and all judges and magistrates. Bless the newly elected officers of the Southeastern District, especially William. William. Guide them to serve according to your will and for the common good of all. Raise up those with heroic virtue who will defend our liberty. Protect those who defend us in the armed forces and give peace to the nations, especially to the people of Ukraine. Watch over all first responders, healthcare workers, teachers, and administrators, especially those of Shepherd's Care Children's Center. Lord, in your mercy, hear Hear our prayer. prayer. O Alpha and Omega, you you pledge to bring all things to their perfect consummation. You will bring heaven and earth, heaven to earth, and banish sorrow, sin, and death. Sustain Julian. Julian. Steve. Steve. Martha. Martha. And the family and friends of Rose. Rose. And all those who are now in tribulation. By the comfort of your holy word, increase their faith and see them through their trials. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Compassionate Lord, you have given us both bread for the body of Christ, the bread of life. Prepare us now to receive with faith and thanksgiving his flesh for the life of the world and his blood that cleanses us from all sin. Unite us that we may believe and confess one faith and bring us to that day when we shall be one people together at the table of our Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our our prayer. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we wait for the second coming of your resurrected Son. Grant us patience as we long to see him. And even now, give us joy at his presence with us through the word and sacrament. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. All these things. 
and whatever else you know that we need, grant us, O Father, for the sake of him who died and rose again, and now lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it, and gave it to the disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. I invite you at this time to remove your mask if you are wearing one, and to take your cup and to hold it so the compartment with the body of Christ is on top, carefully to open the seal. Take, eat. This is the true body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, given into death for your sins. invite you to turn your cup over and very carefully to open the seal. Take, drink. 
This is the true blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, shed for the forgiveness of your sins. Now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in body and soul to life everlasting. Depart in peace. Amen. Lord God, you have called your servants to ventures of which we cannot see the ending, by paths as yet untrodden, through perils unknown. Give us faith to go out with good courage, not knowing where we go, but only that your hand is leading us and your love supporting us. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Alleluia! Christ is risen! Yes. 
You may be seated. As always, it's a great blessing to be in worship with you, with all of you who are here in person, all of you who are joining us from home. Thank you. Thank you for joining us this morning. Before I send you on your way, are there any announcements? Yes, Maggie. Excellent. Okay, so you'll be there next week. So, so yeah, if you'd like to participate in the project uh, for Miss Linda, that's uh, it's out in the narthex. Um, and so please do that. Excellent. Um, I see... Oh, yard sale. Uh, yeah. When, when is the yard sale? Next Saturday. So come see, uh, come help. Uh, come see what there is. If you have questions... Uh, Bob Walters is, is, is sort of coordinating that, right? Uh, so get in touch with Bob, and he can tell you all of the information that I don't have. So, so please uh, talk to Bob. And Maggie. Uh, one more thing, uh, welcome to the graduation. It's not this Friday, but next Friday at 10 It's always a special event, so yeah, please come. So, so not this, this Friday, but the Friday after that, so, so please join us. And what time again? 10 a.m., 10 a.m. Um, also, I know uh, next Sunday is our, our first uh, meeting of our new member class. I know some of you are interested in that. We'll meet right after church, so about 12.30, um, and we'll probably meet in uh, room 104, which is right behind the sanctuary. And uh, so if you have questions, you can talk to me. But this will be our kind of first sort of getting to know you uh, meeting. And, and we'll um, kind of share our stories and, and make plans for the future. So I encourage you, those of you who are, are joining us and, and would like to take a further step or just explore uh, more about this congregation and what we teach and believe, please join us. Um, other announcements? In that case, I will let you go. But as you go into a world that is, or as much as uncertain and sometimes scary, know that you know the ending of the story because Jesus has written that ending. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.